do my intro, um, but we've got some technical difficulties. So thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you to Sense Labs for giving me this opportunity to showcase today. Um, my name is Dave Clayton. I'm a graphic designer based in Swindon in the UK. Uh, that's been my primary job for way too many years, um, really back as far as computers came out of the caves. So um, it's what I've been doing, it's what I love. Uh, and today I just wanted in this session, uh, which is getting creative with third party resources, is just to share with you some things, some products that I've been using that I find they make me more creative, they improve my workflow. And now it might seem a bit like a sales pitch. I am going to be showing you some products that I use. It's up to you if you want to buy them or not. Everything's all available. It's all on the internet. You can go and find these companies online. Um, just before we go on, this picture looks a bit odd, okay? And that's the reason is, is because there's something I'm going to show you later in one of the Astute Graphics tools. I'm just going to quickly zoom in and show you. So it looks a bit like a half tone. If I just get the magnifying glass here and zoom in, you can see that actually the halftone pattern is my name. Now, this is one of the um, parts of the tools of Astute Graphics that you can do. These are things you can't do in Illustrator. So we are going to come on to that a little bit later. So today, the products I am going to be covering are Retro Supply. Now, I found Retro Supply a few years ago. I was looking for some textures uh, for a project and I came across Retro Supply, started to look at their products, absolutely fell in love with them. And, you know, every time they ask me to do a customer survey, it's just like they've always got what I need. And then sometimes they come out with things that I didn't know I needed and then end up buying them and using them. So I've got quite a big arsenal of retro supply goods. That's brushes, graphic styles, textures. So I'm going to cover some of that today. I'm not here to teach you how to illustrate. I'm not here to create fancy artwork. This is very much going to be kind of a pull the hood up and look underneath and see what we've got. So retro supply is the first thing I'm going to cover. The second thing I'm going to cover is astute graphics. Now, I was the astute graphics training manager for four years and the community manager. Uh, I left in May this year, um, but I still use astute graphics. I still keep in touch with the team and they are now part of my workflow. I could not live without them as an illustrator user. And hopefully some of the things I'll show you will explain why, because not many people really understand what plugins do and they don't really trust them sometimes because they think they're gimmicky. When you see what some of this stuff can do, you will absolutely want to get, get involved and see what you can do. If I get time, I'm going to cover Font Self, which is another third party tool. Because of the timing and te technical difficulties, I might not. But I have said to the team, my email address will be available at the end. If you want to know more, contact me because I will be more than happy to do a live webinar on YouTube or wherever, if you want to come and join and ask some questions and look at tools a little bit deeper, because we really are going to whiz through this today. Um, if you've signed up, you will get a goodie bag. There's a digital goodie bag if you paid the $10, $10 for Lightbox. And in the Sense Labs folder, I made a pen pot collection, which was uh, part of a project I'd worked on at Astute Graphics. Um, and it was just, I got some pens out of my, out of my pot got some paper started making dabs and lines um, and just made a brush set for you it's completely free you can do with it what you want I use astute graphics as part of making the actual pen so you can get them speaking of freebies and I want to say a huge thank you to Dustin at Retro Supply they have made an illustrator brush sample pack available completely for free for Sense Labs light, light box session for today so if you go over to the website, that's the link at the top. If you want to take a screenshot, um, if you use the code Sense Labs, you're going to get 100% off. I think it's about $15. I think in the notes I got it wrong, so it was 18 or 19 but I think it's $15. But you can get it absolutely free using that code. So I'll jump over there after this session if you want to grab them. I will cover them uh, today. I obviously can't show everything, but I will kind of cover off what they are. It's just a, a whole suite of... Um, illustrator brushes from various different packs that they do so what i've got today is a whole bunch of files i'm going to open up we're going to go through and like i say i apologize if we're going to whiz through this stuff but there's a lot to show you so let's open up the first file here so let's just go to number five so what i've got here is as i just mentioned we've got the brush pack so i'm just going to come over here and open these brushes now when you download the brushes from Retro Supply, 
Uh, I'm not going to teach you how to load brushes into uh, Illustrator because, like I said, we want to get through this. So find how, how to add brushes in. It's fairly simple. Um, and there's a bunch of brushes being made available. So I've just got a few here. Now, I was going to try and show it on some artwork, but I think just because of time restraints, I just want to show you how they just work on brushes and strokes. So what I've got here is the word brushes. I outlined some text. If we just come over here, let me just move Illustrator for you because it's just snapping out the end of the window there. Um, I want to be able to get to the top. Um, if you don't ever use the appearance panel, start using the appearance panel um, because this is going to be your best friend in Illustrator because so many people I know don't use the appearance panel and you can't see what's actually going on in your artwork. So what I've got here is the word brushes. Now, it, it doesn't matter that it's text. It was just really to show you that once you've got brushes installed, whichever tool you start using, like if we just draw a straight line here and we give it a stroke. So let's just bump that up so we can see what's happening. I think that's really high actually. So it's nice and thick. So what you would do is when you download your brush packs, you would come over to the brush panel and then if you click on any one of the brushes, what will happen is that will apply itself to the stroke. Now, I'm not here to teach you how to suck eggs. I'm sure there's a lot of this you'll probably know. But for those of you that don't, these are the tools that are available. So the ones that I've made available will work and also the ones from Dustin will do the same. So we've got some different textures here. And what you can do is just go through, change them. Obviously, I've got quite a thick stroke set here so I can reduce it. Um, but some of these are really, really cool. So if I was to do, say, let's get my type tool and I'm just going to go to Futura because it's a nice, big, fat, bold typeface. And we'll stick to good old Lauren Ipsum for the moment. Let's just pull that out uh, just for ease of use. I'm just going to create outlines just so that it's not live text. And I'm just going to switch that round. So I've actually got a stroke. We'll bump that up. Um, and let's just change the color so we can see what's happening. We'll go bright pink. So now we've got that, we can just come over here. And if I wanted to pick one of these strokes, it would automatically apply to the stroke that we've applied to the artwork. So if you're using brushes, uh, if you're creating any kind of line work, these brushes are going to come in really handy. And like I said, there's a, it's a vast set. Retro Supply do some really cool sets depending on what kind of artwork that you do. Um, I was going to try and show some shading. Uh, so if you're actually doing some artwork and maybe you don't want it on text, you don't want it aligned, but you want to create some shading options, you can actually just uh, let's just get the uh, let's get this brush tool here and we'll just delete this. And we come over to the brush. So we just draw a line there. So we don't have to stick to the same one. If we want to, we can just change the brush type. Uh, oh, I haven't got it selected. There we go. So we can use different kind of kinds of brushes to create some shade in, in artwork as well. So they are really versatile. You don't just have to use it on straight lines all the time. But if you go to Retro Supply, they've got some really cool tutorials showing you how the different brushes and tools and textures work. So I just really wanted to introduce you to the free gift that you're going to get. Uh, so let's just close that for a second. Um, don't save. And we're just going to go into retro graphic styles. So one of the other things that is available that I love using on, on not just from retro supply, but you can actually create them yourself. And a lot of people don't realize this, that if you create a specific kind of style in Illustrator, you can actually save that as a graphic style so that you can go back and use it again. So if I come over here to my panel, let's just go up to the top. I'm just going to open my graphic styles panel up. Uh, let's just pull that out like that. Um, and what graphic styles would do is, let's say we've got some type here. Uh, we're going to add a stroke to it nice and dark. So let's make it a different color so we can see what's happening nice and dark. So just as basic as that, if I wanted to create a graphic style, if I wanted to keep using that over and over, I'm just going to, oh, I've done that wrong. I know what I've done there. Um, what I would do is take that into graphic styles and use it over and over. Now, 
because the way I've got my system set up today, I know I'm going to have a couple of problems because I have had some issues today. So apologies. Um, but what I've got over here is some graphic styles that Dustin has on his website. These are the ones that I've bought before. So if I just come over here, if I just pull this one out, what you can see is the effects have been made and then you just apply them to your artwork. So for instance, I've made this red with a blue stroke. If I click on this graphic style, it gives me this really cool kind of offset retro inky look. Uh, if I come over to this one, I get like a standout drop shadow. And there's all these different graphic styles that Dustin's made available at Retro Supply that are absolutely awesome. Uh, and I was going through today and I was trying to work out which ones to show you. And there were so many that I ended up with loads of panels. But some of these are so cool because, again, when you're working, sometimes you don't know what you need until you see an effect. So I'm the same with typefaces. Um, sometimes a typeface can actually make me create a document uh, or some artwork because I love what the typeface looks like. So things like this with uh, graphic styles, it really saves time because you don't have to keep going through the same process over and over again. So I would suggest you go and look at the re uh, graphic styles uh, on Retro Supply because some of these are such absolute time savers. And as an older person, I'm retro, I'm vintage. Uh, I love these vintage styles. I love this kind of artwork. So this is right up my street. So don't be put off by the name Retro Supply. They are some really cool tools in there. But graphic styles are one of the things that I really love because what you can do is just start to create your own little library. You can save graphic styles. There's videos on YouTube showing you how to do that. But what I do is I create little graphic style families for different projects I'm on. And if somebody says to me, oh, can you make me like kind of a cool offset retro poster, vintage poster? I know which graphic styles to go and get. I know sometimes what typefaces I want to use. So I just go and get them, open them up and I can apply it. And the person at the other end thinks I've spent ages on it. I can tell them I've spent one or two hours make some money it probably only took me 15 minutes but that's the thing of being a graphic designer and surviving we want to get the work done we want to make some money and save ourselves some time so that's graphic styles like i said i apologize i'm gonna to have to whiz through this but we have got a lot to cover uh one last uh quick thing that isn't an actual file that i wanted to share with you is this has been an absolute godsend to me and it's made me create my own color palettes so this was the thing I got ages ago, the mid-century color catalog. And it's so cool because it's got different colors taken from actual old vintage goods. So I'm a collector of old vintage crap. Uh, I like keeping things. I take screenshots of mid-century and, and old vintage um, tins and boxes. And I open up an illustrator. I extract the colors. I create swatches, I save those swatch libraries, I put them on in my creative cloud libraries, which means they're available to me in InDesign and Photoshop as well. So again, when I'm thinking of working on a project and I've got something in my mind that I wanna do, I know that if I can't find these colors quickly, I know there's somewhere like Retro Supply that's done something like this. And if I just quickly, I mean, I just love the artwork, um, the packaging, Bazooka Joe's a big favorite of mine. But just these old, lovely vintage colours, mid-century colours, just I love designing in this kind of um, this colour scheme. It's it's more to my suited to my style. But um, again, yeah, this is another thing that you can get that I absolutely love. Uh, so let's go on to the next piece of artwork because we're nearly at halfway through the hour. Um, so. Yes, let's just open up that file. I'll just show you quickly. There we go. So that was the, um, let's just close graphic styles for a second. And if I just dock my brushes, uh, if we come over here to the color swatches, there we go. Um, so what you do is you actually just download these palettes and you open up in your swatch panel and then you can start doing color work um, on colors that have already been made for you. Now, I see a lot of um, palettes available. I think some people have got a real eye and skill at finding really good uh, colors that complement each other and colors for a particular style. So if you do make your own, if you do find something like this piece of artwork, 
I would scan it, I would create some chips um, on the side and I would use my eyedropper and then I would start dropping colors out of this. Um, actually, I don't know if you can see me on screen or not. So apologies, I'm sitting here talking. I can see myself. I don't know if you can see me. No, um, oh, okay, yeah. So I, what I would do is use the eyedropper tool and I would go through and start to pick colors off the packaging and then I would save those chips and then I've created my own palettes and I'd name them accordingly. So uh, that's another really cool thing that uh, I use Retro Supply for, but also uh, things that you can create yourself and start to make your own arsenal of goods. And if they're good quality and you're happy, you can start selling them as well, because there's lots of people who sell these kind of resources. And one of the things today I wanted to show you when we get to street graphics is how you can actually make something yourself. So that's kind of a whistle stop tour through Retro Supply. Um, one of the last things that I use for them is textures. Now, I'm a big, big texture fan. I Everywhere I take my iPhone, I'm forever stopping and taking photographs of tin, metal, rust, wood. Um, you can never have too many textures in the same way you can never have too many fonts. Um, but yeah, textures, absolutely love. And the crossover here is... Although I can get textures from Retro Supply and there's a really good collection of them there, I have got a collection of my own. But if you are an illustrator and you don't know about this next tool I'm going to show you, you probably keep them all in a folder. And then when you're working in Illustrator, you bring the texture in, you try and clip it. And then when, you've got, when your artwork starts getting bigger and more complicated, you're trying to keep factoring all these uh, textures into your artwork. So... What we're going to do is now jump over to Astute Graphics, and I am going to be really quick with this stuff now. So one of my favorite tools that I found in Astute Graphics is called Texturino. And what it is, it's a texture manager, and it's absolutely brilliant. I love this thing. It's one of the leading tools I tell people about when they ask me about Astute Graphics. So just going to open up this piece of artwork here. I'm just going to close this. So I just got this graphic off of um, Adobe Stock. Uh, I think it's Adobe Stock. I generally use them. And what I wanted to do was just make this a little bit less flat in color. I want to give it some life. So if you, after this session, go and look at Astute Graphics, you need to download the Astute Manager. Now, all of these tools I'm going to show you are completely available to you for free for seven days. You can try them out. It's completely unrestricted. You can do whatever you want with them. Um, obviously, when your trial ends, the tools will be no, no longer available to you, which means when you open up Illustrator files or try and pass them on, you won't be able to use the effects. So you get seven days free, and then you get another seven days to try it. And if you're still not happy after those seven days, you get your money back. So you can't really lose. But I think if you do try this out and you are an Illustrator user and you use it to make money, I think these tools, these resources are just a no brainer. So this one here, I wanted to give it some character. I wanted to use a texture to make it look kind of a little bit rough and ready. So down here on the side, you can see all these weird little icons that you won't have in your Illustrator. And these are my suit graphics tools. I'm gonna to come down here to this one, and this is called Texturino. What it does is it enables you to manage your textures and then apply them really easily using this panel and an annotation. So. In this case, if I go over here to this flyout, I go to my texture manager. I've got all of these textures loaded. They, I've got them categorized, whether they're repeating, what my blend mode's gonna be as well, because we have blend modes in Illustrator and the color mode with their color or grayscale. And then you can see here actually how big they actually are. Now, obviously any kind of uh, non-vector artwork you bring into a vector file is going to increase the file size, but that's kind of, the trade-off is you're also getting great artwork. So what I'm going to do here is there are videos on YouTube for all of these tools, um, some with my voice on, so you can go and find out more information about these. But what I want to do here is apply a texture that um, if you're an Astute Graphics customer, they supply textures and graphic styles and, and brushes. Um, and there was a texture pack supplied by Retro Supply called the Snack Pack, and it's got a ton of stuff in it. And there's one texture in there that I absolutely love, and it is uh, old bandage tin. So all I do with Texture Eno open or the texture panel 
Um, and if you want to find any of the panels, if you do it, download it, you just go window, street graphics, and then you've got them all over here. Um, so I've got this texture that uh, Retro Supply supplied. Uh, I've used it so many times. And there's a tutorial on YouTube where I actually made some stickers on a toolbox, on a metal toolbox. And this method is so cool. They look absolutely realistic. So all I need to do is once I've selected my texture, I just need to hit the plus sign. I've got my artwork selected. So I'm just going to hit that plus sign. And what it's going to do, it's going to look a bit messy. So don't worry. We've got this annotation here. And what I can do on this part here is I can scale it. So as I start to drag it in, you'll start to see the border of the texture appear in the artwork. So I can go smaller if I want. I can sit there because it will repeat. So what it's done there is it's given me my texture. But the other choice I've got, and, and again, this is something that why all of this makes it easier, is I can reduce the opacity of this texture if I want. I can move it around. I can resize it. I can rotate it if I want. Uh, and I've also got these blend modes. And the blend mode that I absolutely love for using textures in Illustrator is this one right at the bottom called Knockout. And what it does is it punches it right through the artwork. So once I've done, I'm going to leave it at 100%. I'm going to choose Knockout and I'm going to click away. And you can see now we've got this artwork that looks like it's been on the side of a van and it's all scratched. And if I just come over to my layers panel and I turn this backdrop on, you can see there that that cut that texture has punched right through that artwork. Now I said to you about the appearance panel. So we've committed this, we've come over here and you're like, oh, actually I, I didn't want that one. Um, I wanted a different one or I wanted to do something. So all you do with your artwork selected, come back here. We're gonna come back to our appearance panel, which I have, uh, where did I dock it? I've just seen it, there we go. If we come over here, you can see here it's a live effect. So if I wanted to just go back into it, I can do that. Or I can click, I think I can click on the, the pink bar for this because it's an effect. But if not, go to the appearance panel. I can go back in here and I can change the blend mode. I can change the scale of it again if I maybe want it to come in a little bit smaller or make it a little bit bigger. And you can kind of randomize it, you can spin it around. So that texturino. Uh, is a really cool tool. Now, I did have another piece of artwork that was gonna show this off, but I'll quickly show it here. So let's say I don't want that one, I want a different texture. So what we're gonna do is, let's just go, I don't know, we'll go balsa wood, something really funky. If I just wanna swap this out, instead of hitting the plus sign, I'm just gonna hit this one next to it. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna switch that texture out. So now my annotation allows me to go back in and make some changes. I can change the blend mode. Let's try screen. That's going to be a bit funky. Um, so I love knockout or, or multiply. But all those textures are all in that texture manager, all stored safely. And you can just go in and pick by category. Um, so you, as you can see, I've got a bunch of categories. And when you go in the category, you can then select the one you want, or you can just click, go left, right, and scroll through and see what they look like. So that's Texturino. That's one I love, and it's great with Retro Supplies textures. So the next one uh, is, speaking of effects, we've got um, a tool called Stylism that's in the street graphics. So I'm just going to open this one up. Uh, God, I really want to get through this quick because I love these tools. Um, let's come over here. We don't need Texturino anymore, so let's dock it up there. And let's just close that. There is also um, an opacity brush. So when you've got a texture open, in fact, let's just see if I can um, open this file here. We'll come back to that. So I've got a texture applied to the back. So if I come over to my, doo -doo 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 -doo, where is my appearance panel? Let's come up here and find it again. Uh, appearance. Oh, lost it. Appearance. Oh, there it is. Um, so you can see here, I've got this texture. Now, what I can do is if I come over to the layers panel, just make sure I've got that layer selected. There we go. Um, I've also got a opacity brush, which means I can, I think this works. Um, we can just increase the size of the brush. So I can actually paint away some of the texture. Now I've got it very set really low and hard, but what that's actually doing 
is uh, I've also got GPU turned on, which is why, why you're seeing that. But I can actually paint in and out uh, some of the texture on artwork. But again, you know, there's more videos for this. But this is one of the cool things is you can not only paint out texture, but you can also paint in texture using the opacity brush and the texture brush. So Texturino, absolutely love it. I think it's worth just getting the tools for that as it is. So let's just close that down for you. Let's have a look at this one. Now we've got three tools here. Um, these are three things that one of them specifically, um, there's, there's four tools in stylism, including stylism, but there's two in here that I guarantee when I show you them and you think of the way you've been doing it in Native Illustrator, you are going to be glad you know about these tools. So this first one, Architect, it's a little bit more of a gimmicky one. It wouldn't necessarily be used day to day. But what Architect does is it actually gives you the ability to create a kind of an artistic architectural look. So just to give you an idea, I've made a blue stroke on this. I'm going to come over to Apply AG Architect and just click on that. Now you see straight away I've got a bunch of lines. It looks a bit messy. But if I come down here and change this to 10 and I change the color to a light blue, like so, uh, I can turn off the curve. So you can see here, if I zoom, just zoom in a little bit. If you look, look in here, if I, I can turn the curves off or I can leave the curves turned straight off. Um, but it depends really what you're trying to do. But this is great for creating a kind of faux hand drawn look. Uh, and actually, if you also give the, um, stroke uh let's see if i can do it uh no i'm not gonna be able to do it there but you can actually apply a brush to this and then the lines will come off so you can really make it look hand drawn if you use a pencil brush on your stroke as well but i haven't got this set up at the moment but this what's cool about this is we can change everything in the panel so if we wanted to i can increase that length a little bit if i come down here i can change the end style to tapered I can change it to dashed. I can control how much dash. So if I just zoom in there, you can see those um, we go tapered. I quite like the tapered look, but it's a really cool way of adding that kind of architectural look to your artwork. So let's just come back here like so. And let's move on to splatter. Again, another kind of gimmicky one, but it's one of those that when you see the tool that's available, you actually become quite kind of artistic thing ah i know how to use that so especially if you're in advertising you're doing liquids and beer and beverages um this is a really cool one so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to dock this over here and i'm going to come to my splatter tool and it does exactly what it says in the tin it's going to apply splatter effects and you're probably wondering what that is so with the panel open again all the things are through window street graphics uh, I always go to default settings just to reset it. And I'm just going to click apply splatter. Now, straight away, you can see that's exactly what it's done. But what's really cool about this is it's all vector, but it's live. So what we can do is come over to the panel. I'm going to say specify color, use original. So I'm going to tell it to take the color of the actual thing that I've got. So we've got this pink color and it's live text as well. So it's, we're working on live type here. And what I can do is go in and let's just move this down here so I don't keep activating that. I can increase density. Uh, I can increase the size or decrease the size. Uh, I can increase the spread. So how much farther it, it spreads out from the actual words. Uh, it's so much control in here and you can have so much fun with this. And when you're done, you can actually detach everything. So it's like expanding. So once you've detached it, it's no longer part of the letters. But if I just zoom back out and I just come over here uh, to my type tool, there we go. And I would just change this to the word splash. And you can see straight away, it just changes the effect and also it's random it's very random so you have a seed so you can just keep click, clicking the seed and it will keep giving you a different splatter effect but if you start doing some line work and, and some outline work you can get some really cool like fast spreading uh, splatter effects so that's 80 splatter this last one um you might have lost your audio real quick sorry say that again 
So I think someone's leaving me a message in my ear. Um, so we've got AG offset. Now this one is generally when you want to create an offset on something, you used to go up to object, you come down here and then uh, where are we? I can't even find it because I don't use it anymore. But you would create an offset by coming down here and you you would set one. Then you get one another one, you go back and set another one. So what we're going to do is we've got AG offset. And what that gives us the ability to do is to apply loads of offsets all in one go. So we've got an orange color, we've got a pink stroke. You can see that up here. If I come over to the AG offset and apply an AG offset, I've got some settings here that are already set. So let's just undo that. Let's come back to reset defaults. So what that's gonna do is give me some one step and a distance. So I'll apply the AG offset. Now at the moment, I've got a distance of 12 pixels and it's fixed because I've only got one step. So instead of going back over to object and selecting a new one, let's create a second step. And now we can untick the distance. So now I can actually increase the distance between those offsets, I can increase the steps. I can come down here and I can change the color of the stroke. So I can come over here and say, maybe make it bright yellow. And then you get a blend from the original stroke color to the yellow. If I want to, I can change the fill. So I can alter color. If I want to, I can pick from a gradient. So I can come over here, I create some gradients. So I'm just gonna pick a gradient Oh, set it on the wrong thing. Helps if I select it there. Uh, come back over here, alt color, change to gradient. Click on there. Come and pick one of these gradients I selected. And what I get is a blend of the colors that are in that gradient. So I can keep adding more steps. Let's select, uh, select it. I can keep adding more steps and I can keep changing the distance. So this is an absolutely fun tool. I, I, when it first came out, I was like, Aaron Draplin's going to love this because he does a lot of thick line work and colors, but I'm not even scratching the surface of this tool. But if you do offset work, this is fantastic. And when you have done something, again, you can come over here, you can actually detach all of those offsets and treat them as individual shapes or paths. So AG offset, absolutely fantastic tool it's going to save you a ton of time especially if you have to keep going back and making alterations and once again if we come over to the appearance panel which i keep losing it's a live effect so i can go back into the appearance panel let's go back in here let's pull that out so i've got it there all the time so if i come back down here you can see i've got ag offset if i want to go back into it i can go back into it i can make some changes carry on it's live all the time so really fantastic tool there um so that's covered three of the tools from stylism so let's move on to the next one uh i'm not going to uh let's have a look what i had here yep i've already done that one so the next one is uh, don't save let's go to this one here so this is a piece of logo work. Now I'm not gonna be able to show all the things here, but again, uh, more useful tools for you. Uh, this, this, so I think it's like 20, 20 tools, 20 plugins, but something like 30 tools, uh, which seems quite daunting, but don't be scared of it because you, if you get this, you can have tons of time. And like I say, cross, cross using things like brushes, uh, for resources, and then, also using these tools as well so artwork like this i can apply textures to this if i want i can apply a brush style around the outside uh this particular mask here uh one of the quick tools I'm get, uh, i was going to show you it's called vector first aid and when you get artwork from other people or you've downloaded it from somewhere it's actually quite a mess so if you just open vector first aid up and i've got this vector file off of adobe stock i've not done anything with it i'm just going to check it and it's going to tell me it's got all these things wrong with it. Um, and if you've ever received PDFs and open PDFs in Illustrator, you know the pain I'm talking about where things like text is broken. You have to put it all back together. It's outlined. You have to turn it back to a live text. Vex First Aid does all that for you. So go and find the videos on YouTube of Vex First Aid. But all I need to do, fix all. Just do one more check. There's one more redundant point. Fix all. I can also use this to remove points if I want. But it's, I like the artwork here. 
So one of the new tools that just came out is great if you use a lot of vector work and you're having to manipulate lines. So I'm not going to go too deep into this, but if we come over here to reform, uh, just open reform, reform is a brand new tool that they just brought out. And what you can do with reform is if you come over to a line or a path, instead of having to use the pen tool to try and manipulate it, all you need to do is hover over the path and you get an annotation and you can then drag up and it sets this marker and you can decide like how far along you want it to go and where you want it to be. And when you're happy with it, all you need to do is click apply. And what that will do is it will change that artwork for you. So let's say we go to this eye I actually want the eye to be a little bit looser like so. I can just click apply like that. Come over here. Now this one, it's only picked up there. So I just dra drag this end marker, drag it around the line, pull it down like so. Then what I can do is just pull these markers out just to reshape this. I'm happy with that. And then I only need to do this on half of the artwork because if you've got Mirror Me, which is the free astute graphics tool, what you can actually do, I will try and do it quickly because I'm really conscious of the time here, uh, um, is the butterfly. So if I come over here and I pull this out, what I'm actually going to do is get, try and get that ha halfway point. But what I'm doing is I'm mirroring the artwork. So as soon as I've committed it, let's just move that out, will they? I apply to the layer and now my artwork is completely mirrored. And also, if I come back over to uh, the mirror me, where are you? Uh, let's come back, here. mirror me, there we go. Uh, I can just remove the axes. So now my artwork is back to completely solid vector. So it's a really good way if you do this kind of artwork, that kind of Von Glitschka look, uh, this is a really great way of reshaping your artwork without having to worry about the pen tool. Um, and it's so easy to do. One other quick thing in Phantasm, because we are going to look at a couple of Phantasm things here, is if we come over to Phantasm, something that's in Illustrator because of this tool that is it's in Photoshop, but it's not in Illustrator. And what you can actually do is we've got this artwork here, it's browns and yellows, but you're thinking, I wonder what it would look like in various colors. Now, Illustrator does have the recolor tool, which is very, very powerful, very good, but it's quite a steep learning curve. What I like about Phantasm, if I just want to see what this looks like, I've got this hue, saturation, lightness. And all I need to do is to find different shades of what this will look like. I can actually change those shades by using hue, saturation and lightness. And I can start to see what this would look like, blues and purples. Uh, and then when I finished, it's still got the underlying colours. It hasn't actually physically changed the colours unless I expand it. And if I want to go back to normal, I just click the cross takes me back to the original colors but it's really powerful you can do duo tones i'm going to show you half the half tone thing in a minute i want to make sure of all the tools i'll show you this one but for phantasm there's four tools there that you can see that i could spend a lot of time in here but they're really really useful moving on so that's 11 let's go to uh i might have to leave that one let me just check what that file is um okay so oh yeah there we go so this one here uh there's a couple of things that a lot of people don't realize they've got access to and this is one of the coolest things so for those of you that create artwork with half tones again going back to the texture style you bring that half tone in and you're trying to place it and shape it and clip it and do all the things with it um what Phantasm will do is give you a live halftone effect so you can keep going back and changing it, but there's some extra stuff into it. So if I click this vinyl and I come over here to Phantasm, I've got this halftone button here. I can just click that. I get a preview. It's given me the default setting. So I can come up here and say, sample the text. My dots are a little bit too large. So let's just knock that up to 25 and uh, hit tab. My grid angle, I can change. Don't like it as it is. I'm going to change it to 45. So I get a slightly different look. Uh, if I want to, I can create an undercoat. I can clip it. So if you just look at the edges there, you can see that I've got full circles at the top or I can create a very quick clipping mask if I want. I'm going to leave it loose like that for the moment. Um, but here's, the, here's where you have fun. So I quite like, you know, you have circles, you can have 
squares you can have lines you get lots of control down here but one of the things i really love is if i come over to the symbols panel uh let's just click uh I'm gonna click okay for the moment so i've applied that half tone so we know we can go back to it we can see it here but what i'm going to do is open the symbols panel and for those of you who are old enough that remember jukeboxes, the records used to have a hole in the middle and you had to put this little spindle in. So I've got this spindle vector and I'm just going to drop it in there and I'm going to call it spindle. I'm just going to change that to graphic. I'm going to click OK. So I've now got this symbol in here and I want to go back into this vinyl. So I'm going to come back here, click on that, click on half tone. I don't want the circles. I actually quite like the fact that vinyl for vinyl records would have something other than circles. So let's drop down now and look, I've now got symbol spindle. So if I click that, my halftone pattern, if I click colorize, it'll also adopt the color. But my halftone pattern is now that spindle shape and it's vector. So you can keep going back in and changing this. So we've got to say, we've got some settings down here. So I can increase the DPI if I want. I could go maybe up to 35, make them a little bit smaller. I can use this down here to make them more dense or kind of lighter and further apart. But let's just click OK and just zoom in. So I'm just going to come out here and click plus. And I'm going to zoom right in here. And you can see, I know it keeps doing that. Um, if that's the setting that I've got. But if I expand this, these are all vectors. So you can then, there's a tool I haven't even got time to show you. I, I could then go in here and using Super Marquee, I could select these random randomly without moving them and recolor them. So this is something I can cover in a different session, but you can make any vector shape a symbol and you can use that symbol to make your halftone. How are we doing for time? Awesome. We are having to wrap up. And again, I apologize with the tech issues, but there will be more from Dave Clayton with Sense Labs at a later time through a webinar. Um, and I just like to remind everybody to check out the description. Dave Clayton has some awesome goodies from Retro Supply, and we have some awesome giveaways listed in the description. So don't be afraid to check that out and stay tuned to our socials for when we announce when Dave can continue this awesome talk. Because I mean, what we heard was I, I could have watched this forever, but unfortunately we have artists back to back today. Um, okay. um, but I'm going to go ahead and close this out um, if, again. If anyone, yeah. want, if anyone wants to ask any questions, just email or find me on social media um, at, at it's Dave Clayton, or you can email me at lightbox at it's Dave Clayton.com. So if there's anyone awesome. got any questions or wants links, I'll, I'll make a PDF available.